we're going to be discussing nuclear fission reactions. That's why I put this in. Is uranium edible? <laughs> Once. Oh, I had other fission uh, memes, but I think I've shown lots of them before. Things like, you know, uh, what do uh, physicists eat? Like fission chips or, you know, uh, you know, like a boat, for example, called Gone Fission. <laughs> but let's talk about this now. What is fission? Fission is when a heavy element splits into two or more lighter elements. And if we look at this right here, this binding energy per nucleon curve again, so something like this right here, um, fission is going to happen, well, actually, or even fusion. So over here, this here is when fusion is energetically favorable. Whoops, I just lousy at writing here. Um, that's because you're going up in this curve, whereas over here, fission is more likely here. That's because you want to go up in this curve. So that explains why, for example, fission is going to happen mostly when elements have a nucleon number, you know, greater than 230, for example, then they'll you know readily come this way. All right, let's go deeper into this. So it's something called spontaneous fission. That's when something just happens on its own. It's not super common, but it does happen naturally. So like thorium-232 does it, uranium-235 can, uranium-238 can. But usually the key thing is it releases neutrons. So when you're done, remember what a neutron is? A neutron is just this. This is a neutron. We normally write it with an N um, for neutron, and it's got one nucleon and zero protons because it's not a proton. Uh, okay, let's keep going then. We've got induced fission. This is when you cause it to happen artificially. Usually you're adding a neutron to something to make it unstable and it undergoes fission. So for example, neutron induced fission, normally you're going to do something like this. You'll you know, start off with a neutron plus something will lead to, well, stuff. So you'll make new things like this thing plus this thing, but uh, very often you'll get neutrons again out of it. You know, those neutrons will come out of the reaction, of course, plus energy. This is how reactions tend to work. So we really care that you get a neutron coming in, uh, running into something. It makes something else, something else. Plus, usually it makes extra neutrons. And that's the key thing is a chain reaction. That's because if you look at this, may maybe you get like two of these instead. Oops. So maybe you get, yeah, two, for example, neutrons. Well, then if you've got two of them, imagine one comes in to do this, you make some new elements, sure, you get energy out of it, absolutely. But it also, you know, the byproduct of this reaction is, you know, let's say two neutrons. Well, each of those neutrons can come in and make more reactions, which make more neutrons, which make more reactions. That's why it's called a chain reaction. One causes, let's say, two neutrons. Each of those causes another reaction, makes another two. You see it quickly, quickly grows. So there's something uh, called uh, enriched uranium. That's because the uranium that you find out of the ground, for example, like if you're going to mine it, it tends to be uranium-238. And that one's mostly stable. But there's a small proportion of it. So, you know, if you just sort of dug up some uranium, most of it will be uranium-238. It's true, but some of it will be uranium-235. And that's the special one that we want. But here's the problem. We don't want the uranium-238. We just want the 235. And it's difficult to separate them. So here's what we do. We enrich uranium. What does that mean? Well, we do some different processes in order to get you know, more uranium-235 compared to 238. One of the ways is to use centrifuges, for example. So let's say you spin it, uh, you know, because uh, uranium-238 is a little bit more massive. So of course, you know, things should be expected to go a little further out in a centrifuge. Then you maybe, you know, take that stuff away and keep the center stuff, centrifuge that again, take the stuff away, keep the center stuff, keep going and keep going. You're enriching uranium. And this is what you want because it, it's this magic uranium-235 that we're looking for here because this uranium-235 is the one we're going to use for reactors but also for nuclear weapons, unfortunately. But reactors are yay, we make energy from it, uh, or we get electricity from it. Weapons, not so nice, but it's still using the same processes. So here's an example reaction. So let's say we just started with uranium-235, So let's just, and we add a neutron to it. So let's just do that right here. So we've got a neutron, and it's being added to a uranium-235. Well, what does that do? That's going to make, let's see, let's just look at these numbers. 0 plus 92 is still going to be 92. Oh, that means I'm going to have uranium then left. Um, and 235 plus 1 gives me 236. So, okay, so I'm going to have uranium-236, of course, plus energy. You know, each time you do this, you always get some energy equals mc squared going on here. Okay, so you're always having, that's always happening here. So E 
equals mc squared, where m is your mass difference, so you always get some extra energy out of it. So now let's keep going. Now we've got uranium-236 now. So this is uh, what's going to happen now. So uranium-236, what will it happen? Well, it's not stable. So it will, it will um, decay to produce barium-144 and krypton-90. Of course, plus neutrons, and of course, plus energy. So what do I have here? This is barium-144 here. Krypton, for example, is 90. All right, then we're going to add 144 plus 90 doesn't quite add up to 236. 144 plus 90, let's see, that's 234. I need two more. I need two of something here. So I need, I need a number two on the top. And on the bottom, though, these at least add up to 92. So I don't need anything on the bottom. But it turns out we're going to have neutrons, and neutrons are going to be the key here. So how many neutrons are we going to need? If I just had one, that doesn't add up because this adds up to 234. I need two more, so I'll say two neutrons, of course, plus energy. And of course, what happens then is this. Each neutron, then remember that we made two of them, so each neutron then induces some more. In other words, each, each of these two neutrons, each of them, so let's say this one right here, they go on to do that, and they go on to do that. Right? So these ones, then they create the reaction again. It makes a chain reaction. So let's do an example here. So we've got neutron-induced fission reaction. We have uranium-235. It absorbs a neutron, and then it yields a nucleus of krypton-92 plus a nucleon of uh, a nucleus, sorry, of barium-141. So it's similar to what we did before. So krypton, or this time it's krypton-92 and barium-141, and it's going to give you a x number of neutrons plus energy. So the first part is, well, what's the number of neutrons produced? Well, we've got to figure these numbers out. So on the top, for example, um, we've got, for example, 235 plus 1 is 236. And on the bottom, we've got 92 plus 0, we've got 92. So that's the numbers we have to make. So let's look at this. So 92 plus 141, what's that give me? So that's going to be, let's see, 233 I'm going to need. 33 and the bottom 36 plus 56 that gives me 92 so do you notice on the bottom I'm okay so that means that's good I didn't need anything extra down here but on the top number right here I need 233 I need this to be three more to give me 236 does that make sense so I need uh, how many times one I need three times one this will work so this right here is the only way to get this to work is to have three neutrons. So the answer then will be this one here. I need three neutrons. Okay, so let's go on to part B now. Now it gets more interesting. Now I calculate the energy in MeV released in the reaction and answer it to one decimal place. And we're told these different nuclides here. So uranium-235 has this atomic mass in atomic mass units. Notice he's still U's there. So it's gonna be important to know, first of all, what's a U? Maybe that helps. So 1U, and you can look it up in your data booklet. It's uh, 931.5, I think it is, MeV per C squared. That's important to know. We're also going to need to know about uh, neutrons themselves. We have to know the mass of a neutron. Okay, so my data booklet tells me the mass of the neutron is, well, they got in kilograms, but I needed the one in U. I figured that was an easy thing to do, and we'll see why that is. These are going to be the pieces we're going to need. Now I think it helps to consider the mass of a left-hand side, so mass of a left-hand side, and we're going to consider the mass of the right-hand side. So we're just going to consider all the different things on the different sides of this equation right here. So let's consider this right here. So what's going on, on the left-hand side, so to speak? In other words, the beforehand, we've got the uranium-235 and the neutron. So let's put them in there. I've got the uranium-235 and the neutron. So the uranium-235's mass is this 235.0439U. The neutron, however, is 1.008665U. What about on the right-hand side? What do I have? On the right-hand side, I have krypton plus baryon, uh, sorry, barium plus three neutrons. So I've got three of them. Okay, so let's go ahead and just do these calculations here just to figure out what's this plus this, and what's this plus this plus three times this. Okay, so the total then is 236.0526U for the left side, 
and 235.8666U for the right side. And notice they're not the same. So I need to find the mass defect. I'll just calculate that on my calculator here. So I'll just say um, this one minus this one. So I get 0 0.18597. And don't forget, that's a U. All right, so this is my mass defect. Now, why do I care about this? Well, that's because if I want the energy released, I have to use this equation. Energy released is going to be equal to mc squared. And this is the number that goes in here. So this delta m, that's the one that goes into here. So finally, then we can say that the energy then will be, let's see, the mass here, which is a 0 0.18597. But watch very carefully what I'm going to do now. Don't forget that 1u is uh, 931.5. This is why I like to use these units right here, because watch. If I go, it's MeV per C squared, right? Because that's what 1u was. This is just a u. So I've got basically the mass times u. And don't forget, I'm still supposed to do C squared. And notice what happens then. This is why I like this equation, because look, the c squareds cancel out. Hooray, you didn't have to bother with that. That means I just take my answer and multiply it by 931.5. I'll say times 931.5. I end up with this, 173.231055. Don't forget, this will have units of MeV, so mega electron volts. And keep in mind, they want it to one decimal place. So I'll say then energy is approximately equal to then 173 point, let's see, that'll be two mega electron volts. That means each time this reaction happens, this amount of energy, 173 mega electron volts, will be released in this reaction each time it happens. And if it's a chain reaction, it'll happen lots and lots and lots of times. That's why you get lots of energy out of it. That's why nuclear power plants give you lots of energy. No surprise there.